Hi everyone, my name is Brendan Hodek and I'm an instructor at New York Speech Coaching here in New York City. Welcome to another episode of Voice Breakdown, the show where we teach you how to imitate some of the most iconic voices. In today's episode, we are going to break down the lovely, lovely voice of Elba Fudd. <laughs> Fudd is one of the most famous Looney Tunes characters. His origins are quite interesting, essentially beginning as an entirely different character. In 1937, Merry Melodies released the Egghead Rides Again cartoon, which featured the debut of a character known as Egghead. Egghead would eventually evolve into the Elmer Fudd that we know today. Many different people have voiced Elmer over the years, but they tend to share his trademark voice and articulation. Let's break this voice down. Component number one, the vocal cords. The vocal cords will be the most important component to get right for Elmer's voice. Elmer's voice is a famous example of the use of vocal fry. Vocal fry is the crackling, popping sound you can make with your voice. It sounds like this. Uh... It is easiest to find your vocal fry by sliding lower and lower in pitch until the voice naturally starts to crackle. Uh... Do not use a lot of air for vocal fry, as it is most easily done with low air pressure. Vocal fry can be done on higher pitches, but Elmer's voice tends to be on the lower side. Occasionally, if you listen closely, you can hear moments here and there when he does slip a little bit into a head voice falsetto range. Hey, there's something awfully squoey wound here. With vocal fry, we can control how tight or loose the fry sounds. The fry can sound tighter or looser. This is dependent on how much compression you use. Since different people have voiced Elmer Fudd over the years, you will hear differing degrees of this. Feel free to choose how much you would like to use. We, of course, have to also talk about his laugh. <laughs> to do Elmer's laugh, we need to say the ha huh sound and have intermittent stopping and restarting of the vocal fold vibrations. These are essentially quick moments of tighter compression. Without the vocal fry, it would sound something like this. <laughs> you can hear the choppiness of the vocal fold vibration. Making this stopping and starting sound, combined with the vocal fry and the ha huh sound, is the key to getting his laugh just right. Ha. Component number two, the larynx. <laughs> Elma's voice has a little bit of a squeeze to it. This is done by the wazing of the wowings. If we were to lower the wowings, it wouldn't sound quite the same. So make sure to waze that wowings. Component number three, the tongue. There isn't too much work to be done with the tongue for Elmer. In fact, quite the opposite. Less work than ever is done by the tongue. As we'll talk about when we get to articulation, certain sounds that require movement of the tongue are often mispronounced by Elmer. Other than those sounds, we can use our tongue just as we normally do. Shh, be very, very quiet. I'm hunting wabbits. Component number four, the soft palate. There is some nasal resonance in Elmer's voice for sure. While it might seem subtle, without it, it doesn't quite sound like Elmer. Wabbit season. But if we bring that nasal resonance back in, wabbit season, wabbit season. This is especially the case for his laugh. Ah, ah. So make sure to lower the soft palate to allow sound to enter the nasal cavity. Component number five, articulation. Articulation is an extremely important component for an Elmer Fudd impression, second only to the vocal cords. There are certain sounds that Elmer famously mispronounces. These include R and L. I love this voice, but what I love even more is hunting wabbits. These will instead be produced as W. That's why we say wabbit instead of rabbit and widow instead of little. 
When there are L or R sounds at the ends of words, these usually become vowel-like. On little, for example, it sounds like widow. For a word where er occurs at the end, whether by itself or with a vowel sound before it, this will also turn into a vowel-like sound. Words like car, fur, and there, for example, would become ka, fur, and there. Additionally, Elmer will sometimes stop his th sounds, making them sound more like a t or a d. Right this way, wabbit. Component number six, prosody. Prosody relates to the melodic or rhythmic changes we hear in a voice. The best way to describe Elmer's voice is that it's always a bit lethargic, with slow pitch changes up and down. We don't want to change our pitch too rapidly. Rather, have it flow. Have it flow. Let's recap. Component number one, the vocal chords. We want to make sure to speak in a lower pitch and utilize vocal fry. Component number two, the wowix. We want to raise the larynx for that added brightness and squeeze. Component number three, the tongue. Nothing to worry about here, just make sure not to be very precise with the tongue when it comes to the sounds we talked about during the articulation section. Component number four, the soft palate. Lower the soft palate to allow for nasal resonance. Component number five, articulation. Turn L and R sounds into W's in the beginnings of words, make them vowel-like at the ends of words, and stop the TH sounds. Component number six, quasity. We want Elmer's prosody to be slow and lethargic without changing the pitch too quickly. Thank you for watching New York Speech Coaching's Voice Breakdown, episode number 18. Be sure to check out future episodes of Voice Breakdown, the show where we teach you how to imitate some of the most iconic voices. See you next time, wabbits. Ah. Very quiet. I'm hunting wabbits.